Hey, welcome to the Adornit Studio. I'm Georgiana Hall, and I'm here with Janet. She's one of the Adornit designers. And today we're going to be showing you how to make a really cute Chambery designer tee. It is so cute. It's one of my favorite projects. So Janet and I were meant to be really good friends because we both love shopping at the store Anthropology. So Janet, why don't you tell us a little bit about this designer tee that we're going to be making today. Okay, well, I have a tee from Anthropology, a t-shirt that is knit on the front and a print fabric on the back, and I love it, and it's got kind of a cute A-line shape. And so I had been inspired by that to want to try to make something, and I actually bought a couple of t-shirts to have on hand for when the inspiration really hit me. And then when we got our Chambéry fabric in, I knew that that is the fabric that I wanted to use to create this tee, t-shirt. So I um, thought about it and I decided I wanted to show off a lot of different fabrics from the Chambéry line because I love it and I wanted to show off as many fabrics as I could. I love all the color and the prints and how it just coordinates with that heather gray and the t-shirt. It just really looks stunning. Thank you. And I like the pieced look. It looks, it reminds me of a quilt and we're kind of all about quilts around we here. We love so. to quilt. Yes, so I thought that was a fun, a fun kind of a designer look to add to this t-shirt. So sh let's just get going. Shall we start? Let's do it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you how to create this shirt step by step. So the first thing you need to do is decide which fabrics you want to use. I used um, eight on the, on the shirt I'm going to show you, I decided to use eight different fabrics. And so I cut my strips, first of all, and I have the strips cut. I knew I would need, the strips are two inches by six inches. I knew that I would need more than one with only eight fabrics. I would need more than one of each fabric. So I just laid the fabric out and cut the width of the fabric, my two inch strip, and then cut the six inch strips as we went along. So I have more than one of each color. And then I decided which order I was going to have the strips go in the length of the shirt. So you can lay your fabric strips out in whichever order you think looks pleasing, kind of in color order. And then for this t-shirt, I have a black one that I'm going to display or did, that I'm going to um, use as my sample to show you today. And the length from the neck to the bottom of the t-shirt is 22 inches. So I want a fabric strip that is an inch longer on each end. So I'm gonna, when I sew these together, I need to have enough that they are 24 inches, that the whole thing is 24 inches long. That way you'll have enough to hem the neck and hem the bottom. So the first thing you need to do is just start sewing your strips together. So we'll take the first two you want to lay the strips right side together and stitch along one side. I used a quarter inch seam allowance when I sewed these strips together. That's kind of up to you. Depends on how much fabric you want showing in each strip. And actually, I just, to make it easy, I just sewed right along the edge of the presser foot, which on a lot of machines is a little bit wider than a quarter inch. If you're quilting that might make a difference but for this it doesn't make that much difference okay after you get your strips sewn together you'll want to press this the seam allowance open just like this to make it fast though I sewed all of my strips together and then just pressed all of the seam allowances open all at once and when you're done doing that you're going to have a strip that looks just like this. So for the length I needed for this t-shirt, I, I needed two strips of each color plus two extra strips. 
So that's how that worked out. So there'll be a little bit of math involved depending on the length of your t-shirt. Now, the fun part begins. The next thing you wanna do is cut the middle of your t-shirt. Cut right down the center of your t-shirt. And to do this, I didn't get crazy. All I did was fold the t-shirt in half Kind of match up everything, the shoulder seams and the hem, and make sure everything is laying evenly. And then I took my sewing scissors, and be sure that you're just catching the front of the t-shirt, not through to the back. You'll be cutting the back, but you don't want to do that yet. It's easier if you don't. And then just cut right up the middle, just kind of hold it. and cut all the way through. Okay, so now you have your t-shirt cut apart in the front. And then you're gonna take your strip and pin it to one side and you'll do this right sides together. And you want a hem at the top and at the bottom. So uh, about halfway in the middle of this strip, put that, have that laying even with the top of the, the neck of the t-shirt. And then start pinning. And just lay and lay it flat and make sure that you're not stretching the t-shirt as you go. Otherwise, it's gonna look funny. So you just wanna make sure the t-shirt is laying nice and flat, and then and pin all the way to the bottom. And if you've done your math correctly, you'll have about an inch at the bottom that overhangs the edge, which is what you want, because you want a hem at the bottom too. And then you'll stitch that on your sewing machine, and I, like to stitch it with the fabric side up because you can see that it's going to be much easier. You can use your fingers to hold that seam allowance open on each. Otherwise, if it's on the bottom, it tends to fold over and you're going to get bulk where you don't want it. So you, as you're feeding the fabric through the sewing machine, you can just make sure with your fingers that the seam allowance stays open. And as you when you're, as you get done, when you get all, stitched all the way down to the bottom, this is what you'll have. So this shows it stitched to one side of the t-shirt. I used a half inch seam allowance as I was doing this. You can see on the inside there's a half inch seam allowance and then you'll wanna press that seam allowance toward the t-shirt, not toward the fabric, the cotton fabric. Then when you, when you get it sewn on one side, then you're ready to sew it on the other side and you just, again, do the same exact thing, about an inch up from the neck, pin it all the way down to the bottom. and then you'll stitch it on. And when you're done, it's gonna look like the shirt I'm wearing right in the front. Okay, so when you get the st pieced strip sewn in on both sides, this is what it looks like from the inside. And then when you turn it right side out, this is what it looks like from the outside. And like I said, you'll want to press the seam allowance toward the t-shirt. It tends to naturally want to go that way anyway. And then if you want, I didn't on my shirt, but you could run a top stitch right along there just to give it a little bit of extra 
stability or a little bit of extra design. You could even top stitch in between to give it more of a quilted piece look. And you're, so there's lots of options for what you could do. Now, my, my inspiration t-shirt that I have at home that I bought from Anthropology has kind of an A-line design and I knew I wanted that. And with only putting the front piece in, it's still straight up and down. And so I wanted more of an A-line. And so I decided to add an inset in the back. You can see on the shirt that I'm wearing, I just used one fabric and cut it in a triangle piece so that it would give the shirt um, an A-line look when I was done. This is where you'll kind of want to just try the t-shirt on and then decide how much width you need. I decided I wanted about 12 inches across the back for my inset piece. And so I cut my inset piece. And again, you want this triangle to be about two inches longer than the length of your shirt. But the length is gonna be longer in the back because the neck comes up higher. So make sure that you add for that length and then give yourself about an inch at the top and an extra inch at the bottom. When I cut my triangle piece out, I started with a, a rectangle of fabric that was at least 12 inches wide at the bottom. Trim off, I trimmed off the selvage on one edge, on the bottom edge and then marked 12 inches across the bottom and cut. And then at the top, however much your length is, you'll, make, you'll trim it off there. And then, which I can actually do, so the length of my shirt from the back neck to the bottom hem, is 25, so I need 27 inches. Then you'll want to mark the center. This is for the top of the triangle. You want about a two inch width at the top. So mark the center and you can just finger press it if you think you'll be able to see it good or you can put a pin right at the center. And then measure one inch over from each side of the center. Let's make sure I'm 12. I'm actually a little more than 12. And now we'll mark the center. Now you just want to cut a diagonal line from where you marked in the center, well, from one inch from either side of that center mark down to the corner. So if you lay, if you've got a nice cutting mat like this and you lay it the center right on a number, my plastic cutting piece isn't quite long enough, so I improvised. So go out one inch. and then angle down right to the corner and then cut that angle. And do the same thing on the other side, but it's gonna be easier if we go this way. Okay. Hey. 
now you've got your inset piece for the back. So the next thing you need to do is cut the center back of your t-shirt. And we'll do that the same way that we did the front. Just fold it in half the other direction, match up the shoulder seams and the side seams. This is a little trickier because you've got the other parts sewn in, but if you mess with it a little, you can get it to lay flat. And then cut right up the center, being very careful that you're only catching the outside edge of the t-shirt. And now you attach your triangle piece just the same way that you attached your front piece, right sides together. This is the wrong one. This is the right one. So make sure you have the narrow portion of it up at the neck and give yourself about an inch. And then you should have an extra inch at the bottom. Pin them together. And sew it on. When you've finished sewing your inset to both sides of your t-shirt, it will look like this from the back. And you'll want to press the seam allowance towards the t-shirt, again, just like on the front. And this is what you have on the back. And then the last thing that you need to do to finish off this project is hem, just hem the bottom. And in, to do that, you'll just want to fold up and then stitch along. Same thing with the front. Fold it towards the back and just run a stitch. You can run a, the stitch right the same, in the same place as the stitching is on the t-shirt. And then it just kind of blends right in. Same thing on the back and then the very same thing on the neck. Just fold the extra under and stitch the hem down and do that both sides, front and back, and you're done. And you have the cutest anthro inspired t-shirt that anyone has ever seen you wear. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. Um, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to the Adornet YouTube channel, and find out what fun things we have in store there. Um, I am Janet Parker. I've been pleased to be with you today, and thanks for watching.